The Elder Scrolls Arena, Codex Scientia. Are you having trouble getting out of the starter dungeon? Are you unsure which attributes you need to bump up when you finally advance a level? Well, here are some tips from the experts who have spent many days and months playing Arena. The design of Arena is particularly fallacious to spellcasters. But if you are resourceful and plan a good campaign, non-spellcasters can be just as much fun to play and are also a greater challenge to the player. Playing a non-spellcaster is an easy way to increase the difficulty of the game. Also, non-spellcasters will need to spend more time on extra quests to gain funds to buy special weapons and magical items. One of the things that many people like to do with non-spellcasters is spend more time tracking down artifact quests. Finding an arti artifact is one of the most rewarding moments in the game and is well worth spending the extra time to get that quest. You might also want to postpone jumping into the staff quests until the, uh, the non-spellcaster reaches a higher level. The strategy you adopt will need to be more ingenious with no spellcasters. No matter what uh, character you play, planning in, in advance for a quest is an essential part of doing well in the game. Special tips for each class and subclass. Mage class and mage subclasses. When first creating your character, try and pick a race that is conductive to spellcasting abilities. Usually Bretons, High Elves or Dark Elves are the best choices uh, since their starting into values are the highest. Bretons make especially good choices uh, since they are naturally resistant to spells. The two stats which make the greatest difference for spellcasters are Int and Agility. Agi. Agi. <laughs> you should concentrate on getting both of these uh, above 60, if possible. Int will govern how many spell points you have or can absorb if you are a sorcerer. And Agi will determine how easy it is for you to hit an enemy and get hit by an enemy. After raising these two stats, you will you still have any points left. Add them to SPD or Strength. SPD will allow you to, to run away if need be a wrong fight. Something you may be doing a lot of in the beginning. And Strength. SPD it must be Speed. And strength uh, all allows you to carry more and do more damage. Will and, and luck are also good stats to concentrate on. Will determines how sus sus susceptible you are to spells cast against you, and luck affects anything you do. Remember. As a sorcerer, you will start with zero spell points, but you have the potential to absorb up to three your int in spell points. You should therefore try and equip yourself with the best armor and shield you can, and get the best weapon possible. For all intents and purposes, you are a fighter until someone casts a spell at you. Which probably won't happen until you are third, fifth level. If you, if you have the money, buy as many restore power po potions as possible from the Major's Guild. Each potion will give you 25 spell points. Um, these can be used to, to cast spells. There are certain spells you will want to create in the Spellmaker. A good damage spell that increases with level. A good healing spell that increases with level. A Q paralyzation spell helpful against spiders. 
an area effect. A range silence spell stops a group of monsters from casting spells at you. And destroy one wa huh? One wall spell gets you through dungeons much quicker. A levitate spell quick a moment through a dungeon. A resistant to fire spell allows you to swim in lava. Sorceress absorbs spell points from spells that are cast at them. As a side effect, an absorbed spell, uh, spell does not damage to the sorcerer. A good tip is to never get, have your spell point total maxed out, thereby allowing you to always absorb spells. One further note about absorbing and magic defenses in general. The first response of a sorcerer hit by a spell is to absorb it. His or her chance of doing this is 75% or int and will scores added together, whichever is less. If the sorcerer has cast spell resistance, spell absorption, spell reflection and shield, they will be figured in that order. Thus, uh, sorcerers can have two chances to absorb a spell, with shield as a last resort since it always take damage, takes damage from spells. <sighs> Where am I? Ah, certain other classes get advantages in casting spells, but only in the Spellmaker. If these spells are purchased as a standard spell scroll, these character classes pay as much as any one else, both to buy and to cast. For example, a Nightblade could buy and cast a standard thirst. Uh, what the heck is that? Curse innate invisibility spell for the same cost as any other spellcaster would pay. If he or she made an invisibility spell in the spellmaker, it would cost half as much to buy and cast. The following classes pay special spellmaker prices and have certain other nuances that translate to different gameplay and strategies. But Bus gets only the intelligence in spell points, up to a maximum of 100. This uh, would seem a pretty strong uh, limitation for a character class who also doesn't get any special breaks in the spellmaker. And it is if the player playing the bot really considers his or her character prim primarily a spellcaster, not a thief subclass. The bard spellcasting is best reserved for emergency defenses. The bard's good armor and shield capabilities, decent weapon selection, and all chance of critical striking are more likely to be re regularly useful. Invest in healing, shielding, Q poison, Q disease, and Q paralysis spells, and maybe a low level levitation, invisibility, and destroy wall spell. Healers. Healers pay health price. On Q, drain attributes, elemental resistance, fortify attribute, heal, transfer, and regenerate spells in the spellmaker. So get as many of these as possible. It would be embarrassing to die of a spider's bite or a fall into a lava pit with a full supply of spell points just because you didn't have the right spell in the in your spellbook. Don't waste your time with many offensive spells. You pay twice as much for continuous damage and damage spells. You have a small var variety of weaponry to choose from. <laughs> if you need some offensive spells, look in well stocked equipment stores and major skills for marks, rings, crystals, broadswords, and other items capable of firing offensive spells and keep them fully charged. Battle Mages Battle Mages pay less for cause, continuous damage, damage, strain attribute, elemental resistance and silent spells than any other class. A high level, highly intelligent Battle Mage has the capability of casting might 
mightier spells of destruction than even a fully charged sorcerer. If you can see a fireball cost costing a sorcerer of all 300 of his spell points would cost the battle mage only 150 points, leaving him 25 points to plan a strategic with a drawl if the fireball still didn't destroy what it was supposed to do. Supposed to. Like sorcerers, battle mages can use any weapon they wish. This is a very strong class indeed. Just, just remember that any defensive spell, Q, fortify, attribute, heal and regenerate, costs twice as much for you to cast as anyone else. Keep some healing potions at hand, and you'll probably hurt yourself playing this class. Nightblades. Nightblades are the Fifi mages, capable of lots of sneaky spells like Curse, Designate, as non-target. Invisibility, levitate, lock and open, which they pay half the cost of others. A lot of your time is spent sneaking around, which can be tremendously exciting and rewarding, but won't enable you to raise levels very quickly. You need to kill things to get the experience to do that. The best attack strategy is to hack at your... hack at your adversary with your sabre, your best weapon, and hope for a critical strike. If you don't get one and your force seems to be your equal, don't be proud, turn invisible and either run away or get a more adventurous sport. A bridge, for example, where you, where you can fire spells, so don't bother with continuous damage spells. They cost twice as much for you to cast or arrows with impunity. Nightblades are a lot of fun to play, but are not the noblest of breeds. Warrior and Warrior subclasses The best races for the Warrior and Warrior subclasses are the Norse and the Khajiits. They have great strength and endurance. Get the best armor you can possibly afford to acquire. You can't heal, shield yourself magically. Use a die katana max damage unless you don't have a very good armor class. In which case a combination katana and the best shield you can use is best. Keep several of your favorite weapons and in inventory in case you break one. Uh, everything seems right. Also have several weapons like maces, flails and staffs at hand to, to break down doors, chests, so as, a, as to avoid unnecessary damage to your favorite fighting weapon. Creeks are good places to poke around and get good equipment, but they can very dangerous. Can be very dangerous, must be. Isn't it? <laughs> a first level character has just as much chance of upsetting a leech. There's a... 20th level does. Oh. Stock up on healing, Q poison, and Q disease potions before dungeon de delving. Start the major staff quest later. Begin looking for Fang Lair at thieves of 6th level. Invest in fire based magic item weapon in case of troll attacks. You can't kill them permanently with conventional hacking and slashing. If you run into one and you don't have anything magical that can do them damage, hack them until they fall down and then run away. You might lose them before they have regenerated all the way, but uh, they'll keep up with you if you just run. Invest in high quality weapons, look for at least mithril weapons for use on golems and other high level monsters. Since their monsters won't get damaged by ordinary steel weapons, check the section on special tips for fighting monsters for their particulars. When you, le when you level, invest primarily your strength and agility with some points going to speed and endurance and luck. Only add points to the other stats if they're really low. 
A really low will is bad for non-spellcaster because he or she will suffer from offensive spells more often. Magic items, bracer, amulets, rings, etc. are better than magic weapons because you can keep them equipped and thus can always use them. But you don't have to fight with them when they are equipped and risk damaging them. Jump into fights when you are known as spellcaster. You don't want to get damaged by spells and most spellcasters are much weaker and much weaker at hand to hand than you are. Invest in a good bow to skill. Ah, to kill things at a distance, but as mentioned above, rely more on close fighting. By the way, some things like certain golems actually have a damage aura around them, so pay close attention to your health, but even if you are not getting hit. One nice thing about non-spellcasters, you don't have to sleep as much as spellcasters because you only care about your health and fatigue. Fatigue. Of course, not fatigue. Fuck this word. <laughs> not your spell points. If you're healthy, you're always ready for a fight. Another nice thing about rangers, noble quests are very easy to complete. Because of your superior efficiency in traveling, you can you can complete some quests in half of the time allowed. Remember, just because you are not a spellcaster doesn't mean you shouldn't go to the Major's Guild. Mass potions and magic items are available for all classes, not just magic, magic users. Stop it.